Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. A more obsessed and highly successful merchant, Dory, has just arrived in Genshin Impact. In today's video, we'll be seeing what this extremely quirky little individual can do with the 4 star weapon, the Forest Regalia. Ah yes, Dory. If you can't tell by now, our elusive Sumeru merchant has a rather unusual personality and an equally unusual kit. Honestly, when working on this video, her role eluded me for quite some time, just like how she eludes would-be patrons of her rare wares. But after significant amounts of testing, I think I figured out a few fun and unique ways to enjoy our favorite pint-sized business genie. But really quick, I've got the most awesome and non-mainstream sponsor for you guys today, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is over 600 champions to collect, which leads to literally trillions of champion combinations to annihilate the challenging endgame content. Speaking of endgame content, let's talk about the Doom Tower. The ultimate waifu of Raid, the Arbiter, somehow locked up a bunch of excessively powerful bad guys in the Doom Tower, and we've got to go in there to have a nice little tea party with them so we can all live in harmony. And when that doesn't work, we kill them! The bosses in the Doom Tower require 400 IQ gigabrain plays to defeat, like the Scarab King, who you need to reduce his max HP and attack him with a shield on. And this month, Raid released Awakening, a new endgame dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. Awakening will make your OP champions even more OP and transform them in battle. But wait! Raid just upgraded the Raid regular old death knight into a super legendary death knight and he's completely free just logging for seven days between now and october 27th to get him also use promo code dk rises for a bunch of free stuff to max level 50 your death knight there's never been a better time to get started new players use my link or scan the qr code right here and get a free starter pack worth almost 30 dollars a free champion vergies and also this cool in-game loot you'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only huge thanks to raid for sponsoring today's video Let's first understand the build that I have for the majority of this video. My Dory is built to be a support, and she is using the craftable Sumeru Claymore, the Forest Regalia at Refinement 5. For her artifacts, she is using an Energy Recharge Focus Instructor set, and she is at Constellation 0, and her talents are at 9, 9, and 9. With all the logistics out of the way, we can finally take a look at her kit. Starting with her normal attacks, Marvelous Sword Dance Modified. Yes, it actually has the word modified in parentheses. Anyway, Dory spins her little slime genie friend thing silly as she presumably bosses it around to swing her giant claymore around. Her charge attack has a hilariously adorable animation where she smushes her slime friend as it spins around with the claymore. Unfortunately, the damage it deals is expectedly low, especially with this instructor's support build. Let's move on to her elemental skill, Spirit Warding Lamp. Troubleshooter Cannon. Dory throws out one Electro Ball that turns into two Electro Balls. Dory's second passive, Compound Interest, provides 5 energy per 100% energy recharge. We can see here that Dory's energy noticeably fills up when the first ball hits. and then she catches the particles from her elemental skill shortly after that. This passive is great for helping Dory have much better burst uptime. As for its damage, well, with this support build, it's doing a negligible amount of damage. Speaking of her burst, that's the perfect segue to talk about Alcazar Zaray's exactitude. Extremely precise and exact name aside. Dory throws out a lamp and interestingly, it is not actually subject to auto-targeting. It links up to the player, heals them, and provides the character that it's linked to up to 2.5 energy every time it heals. And it applies Electra to the character it's connected to. Let's run through all the stats on our elemental burst. As a 12 second duration with a 20 second cooldown, it deals 32 ticks of Electra damage to enemies in between your character and the lamp, which ends up being a total of 864% Electra damage at talent level 9. If you look at this clip, we can see that it's healing Dory for 4,504 hit points per heal tick with my current build, and it heals her 6 times in total. Each heal tick also regenerates 2.4 energy for a total of 14.4 energy over the entire duration of her elemental burst. So yeah, that's a lot of parameters for her elemental burst, but hopefully this helps make it a little bit more clear. 
Now let's take a quick look at her Electro application. Dory's elemental skill only applies Electro once on the first hit. As for her elemental burst, in total, it applies Electro four times total over the entire duration of her burst. So honestly, not a lot of Electro application, especially at Constellation Zero. All right, so as we can see with a build like this, Dory's damage is absolutely pathetic. But how does she do as a support character? In this clip, we can see that Traveler's first elemental skill did 16,101 damage on spread. Then with Dory's instructor set buff, and after Traveler picks up the leaf created by the new forest regalia claymore, Traveler's elemental skill did a much more impressive 24,368 damage. This is a nice improvement to her damage thanks to the 240 total elemental mastery that Dory's equipment provides. However, quite a few other characters can provide literally the exact same buffs to their Dendro teammates that Dory can. Is there something that makes Dory unique? Why, yes there is. After trying to use Dory as essentially a clunkier version of Kuki Shinobu, and that not really working out, it finally dawned on me. Besides annoying yourself by proccing overloaded on your own characters, the self electro application from Dory's Elemental Burst can be used in interesting ways. There are two animal characters that really can put this to great use. Let's start with Sayu. One annoying issue with using Sayu with Fischl is that it can be difficult to apply electro onto the enemy and then self infuse electro on Sayu. However, with self electro application, you're basically guaranteed an electro infusion on Sayu's role. We can just see a hilarious flurry of my electro damage Sayu's infused rolls aggravates proccing Fischl's passives Thunderstrike. And the next character that is of interest is Jean. Jean can also make great use of the self-infused Electro. If you've heard of Sunfire Jean, well, this is basically that, but with Electro and Aggravate instead. So, Sun Nectro Fire Gene? Anyway, every time Electra is applied on your character, Gene's burst swirls it off you and deals damage to nearby enemies. And those swirls, I believe, also activate Aggravate. There's just a lot going on in this situation, and honestly, I have no idea what is doing what damage, but somehow this all appears to work. Let's try to see if we can make this bizarre self electro swirling gene team work in Abyss 12. My gene is built with maximum elemental mastery and the iron sting for maximum aggravate swirls, I think. Traveler has the Favonius and Noblesse Oblige, and Fischl has the Stringless and Thundering Fury. The first thing I notice about this team is that it's really bizarre and also feels fun to use. This team rewards quick swapping because from what I notice, the more you swap your characters, the more self-applied Electro you actually get from Dory's Elemental Burst. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure how the self-swirling works with aggravate damage. For example, does the swirl itself aggravate? Does the aggravated swirl not crit and ignore defense just like swirl damage does? Anyway, I ended up with more questions than answers in this run. Regardless, the fact that this team works at all is both strange and wonderful at the same time. This quirky playstyle really fits Dory's personality and character. Next, let's take a look at this team's performance in 12-2-1. What can I say besides this was super satisfying and frustrating at the same time? By using Jean's grouping capabilities, my goal was to keep the enemies near the Mirror Maiden for as long as possible. For some strange reason, the Mirror Maiden didn't teleport here and I was able to get a lot of additional free damage on her. As we can see, this team is hilariously viable for 12-2-1, doing plenty of AoE damage with the flies working against the enemies by providing more swirls, at least I think that's how it works. It is really difficult to tell what's going on, but quick swapping and using Jean's elemental skill to gather the enemies here did wonders, and this team was somehow able to complete 12 2 1 in a very respectable 48 seconds. Lastly, we have the dreaded 12-3-1, which is one of the most annoying and durable Abyss Chambers to date, by pushing the big Vishaps against the wall. This allows me to somewhat effectively group them together to be destroyed by all the aggravated swirls and literally random junk flying everywhere. 
Now full disclosure, I filled up my energy for both 12-2-1 and 12-3-1. Let's be honest, this team needs every bit of help it can get. From being frozen, trapped in bubbles, getting my energy drained, this chamber is an absolute nightmare. Mihoyu heard we wanted more difficult content, so they decided to just annoy us to death. Anyway, despite needing a new space bar for mashing it constantly to unfreeze myself, somehow I managed to dispose of them within a reasonable amount of time. And I thought the fish apps were annoying. These three mushrooms are even worse. They don't group up and they apply slowing water, literally the worst status effect in the entire game. However, we can actually use that to our advantage with Jean's Burst. Jean's Burst swirls the Hydro off herself, which then creates blooms, which then turn into hyper blooms from the self-swirling Electro, an unexpectedly pleasant way of turning your enemy's weapons against them. In the end, this team was remarkably able to comfortably 9 star the top half of Abyss 12 somehow, with 12-1-1 taking 68 seconds, 12-2-1 taking 48 seconds, and 12-3-1 taking 85 seconds. So after gathering quite a bit of feedback from you guys on my Constellation Zero Traveler video, I'm going to include a bonus additional team that I thought of for Dory. She can function as an off-field energy generator. I tried this with Xiao as he is a character who is in desperate need of energy during his burst. Unfortunately, this team really didn't feel good to use. Sure, Dory provides 14.4 energy to Xiao and heals him, but the other benefits she provides are essentially nil. Honestly, as of today, outside of some self-electro infusion shenanigans, I can't think of anything that a Constellation Zero Dory does that's much better than other characters. However, self-confusing Electro is completely unique to her and is an absolute delight to muck around with. Self-swirling with Jean and infusing with Sayu are just two examples I could think of for the most unique part of Dory's kit, which is the Electro infusion from her elemental burst. And perhaps at Constellation 6 there are even more shenanigans to do with Dory. Overall though, Dory is not a character I necessarily recommend as she feels quite niche. But if you're looking for a funky fun way to enjoy Genshin Impact, then Dory is an amazing choice. Dory really highlights one of the best things about Genshin Impact. She provides yet another new and creative way to enjoy the elemental reaction system and the chaos that ensues. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from C0 showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out. Kumo no